Hi, this is Jim Malcolm with Humanize Technologies, and I'm here today to talk a little bit about the Humanize VR Studio software and how you can bring your views camera content to life. Uh, I have now connected my camera to the computer, and when you do that, you get this very simple import menu. I'm gonna go ahead and choose import to preview and edit. This will give me the most options to demonstrate and to show you how the camera works. Uh, there is something here also called render to save or share. And this is a shortcut button that if you already have all of your presets set and you're ready to go, you could just push this one button and automatically render out your work. Uh, but for today's discussion, let's go ahead and import to preview and edit. Now, once I do that, the system goes ahead and looks at all the data that's on the camera and it creates a thumbnail of everything that's there. Then you simply choose the videos that you want to import in. Um, you know what, let's go ahead and bring quite a few of these in just for giggles today. Um, and then we'll import them. Now while they're importing, they're going to move over to this C drive into the imports folder. You can choose where you want to save all your images. Right now, uh, I'm just going to keep them in my default folder. All right, so now the, uh, the computer is actually moving the data via that USB connection from the camera to the computer. Now, because I do have a total of 38 gigabytes worth of data selected, which is about a half an hour worth of recording, uh, it will take about six minutes for this to transfer over. So what we're gonna do right now is, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward the video and bring us to the next step. Okay, we have now transferred over all of our files to the computer. And now I can just scroll down and find what videos I may want to work with. Uh, in this case, let's just go ahead and choose one of these videos that I shot underneath the pier in Santa Monica. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this and then simply select preview and edit. And when I do so, it opens up a uh, dialog box here at the bottom. I'm just going to move forward a little bit and take me out of frame a little bit. <laughs> uh, too much fun. Anyway. Um, let's just go through some of the tools. The top tool up here is the trim tool. And the trim tool allows you to cut out those unwanted pieces. So me having a little bit too much laugh at the beginning. Now the other way to do this is to use your mobile phone, both your uh, iOS and your Android device with the mobile app so that you can remotely start and stop the camera. Uh, because I was running around on the beach, I didn't, uh, I didn't want to pull out my phone, so I just went ahead and pushed the power button on the top of the camera and start and stop the video. So now I go ahead and uh, choose my start point, and then at the end of the video, uh, I end up coming back to turn the camera off as well. So I'm going to go ahead back up back here, and about the time I start walking back to the camera, and let's clip it off on that side. So in total, this turns out to be a four minute and 33 second clip, but we're only gonna render three minutes and 44 seconds of it, the way that I got it currently set up. All right, so that's the top button up here, trim. The second icon you see here is flip 180 degrees. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna flip the video upside down. Uh, and the reason you might wanna do this is if you've had the camera mounted, say, uh, on a drone or hanging from the ceiling or you know any way that you would mount the camera in an inverted position. So we make it very simple within the Humanized VR Studio software to orient your horizon back to uh, proper. This next feature here is one of the uh, my favorite features on here which is choose center. Now if you don't set your camera up initially the way that you ultimately want to have your viewer see in a you know, particular direction, you can choose that after you've already imported your video. So here I want people when they put on the headset to be looking out at the ocean uh, underneath the Santa Monica Pier. All right, and then go ahead and center it there. This next feature here is kind of an interesting one. This is something that we refer to as cut field of view. Now, let's say for a minute, I only wanted to render 180 degrees of this video and all I wanted to show in the headset was out under the pier under the water and cut the sand out entirely. That's how I can do it and then this will render just black in the back. Now there's a lot of practical reasons my, why you might want to do this. Uh, one in particular is uh, I might want to 
put together two different scenes. So I want to have the ocean on this side, uh, and then I want to render and put an amusement park on the back side, right? Uh, I can do both of those 180 degrees, and then in post, I happen to use Adobe Premiere Pro. I could put those two pieces of video together and recreate a 360 degree world that was shot at two different times, or quite frankly, even two different locations. Anyway, that warrants an entire new video, uh, but for now, just know the ability to limit your field of view is there within the uh, software and makes it very easy to cut that field of view. This next little icon here is uh, simply the uh, logo that you would use to cover your tripod. Now, you can put any JPEG image in here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just change it to show you how easy it is. In this Views Camera folder, I have some JPEGs. I'm going to go ahead and choose Humanize and we'll add that. You'll see that this logo has changed and then I can adjust the size of it. So if I, I know that the monopod that I'm using, about 4% is enough to cover that uh, monopod. Of course, I could go larger if I wanted to. Let's just go to 7% for, for this discussion. Now, because you can put any JPEG in there, what I could have done is actually taking a photograph of the sand and then put the picture of the sand in there and then it would blend in and it would be kind of part of the scenery and almost look like the camera is floating. All kinds of ways to get creative in there, but for now just know that you can choose any JPEG and place it at the bottom in order to cover your tripod or at the top if you have the camera inverted. And then uh, this last tool down here allows us to refine our stitching. So in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just look at my video and I can see that there are some stitch errors in my video. So I'm going to go simply add the current frame and you'll, what you'll see is everything kind of snapped. And when it snaps, it's actually aligning all of those videos based on the frame that's, in, uh, that's set up right now. Um, you don't necessarily need to go in and add a lot of frames throughout because once the camera finds a problem area, it applies that correction throughout the entire video. So in this case, I think I'm pretty good with that one setting. Um, there's a couple other little settings to be aware of, and I'm gonna just close this import window to give us a little bit more room, and I'm gonna move this out of the way a little bit so you can see a little more. Um, let's talk about blending levels. If I eliminate blending levels and say none, you can see uh, here that there's some very distinct lines in this video. And that's because I'm dealing with super bright light over here and dark shadows. It, it's really quite dark underneath this pier. Um, and the cameras are not necessarily balanced out against all of that exposure. Uh, so when I hit blending level and I go to low, you can see that most of that starts to get uh, erased. Uh, I can go to medium and medium takes it out entirely. Um, high adds a little bit more density and overall contrast to the image for my liking and what I want to do with this particular video, I think medium is a good uh, is a good mix. I understand that this bright sunshine is blown out, but look at all the beautiful detail that I'm getting in the shadows uh, underneath here. And this is a, like I was saying, a very, very dark, almost black shadow underneath. All right. And then uh, the last piece here is color correction. It works very similar way. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off for now. You can start to see a lot of that contrast in there. If I go to a simple correction, um, I do see some really nice shadows in here, backlit from this bright sun. Um, I think it adds a lot of contrast. I think when you put this in a headset, it should look pretty good. Uh, but let's just take a look at the advanced. So advanced is really pushing uh, and bringing up some of my shadows, trying to balance out with the highlights. A lot of detail in here from the sand. I can see where the water has moved around these poles. Um, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and go with the advanced color correction on this one. All right. So now I've stepped through kind of all of the basic features of the software. Just as a quick reminder, you've got your trim tool so I can choose my start and stop points of what I want to render in the video. I've got my flip tool if I had mounted my camera upside down. I've got my ability to choose center and really what I want my viewer to see when they first put on a virtual reality headset. If I wanted to cut out part of the video, I could do that here using my cut field of view. Of course, it's very simple to change that cap image. Um, actually, we refer to it as a patch down at the bottom to patch the hole where your tripod was sitting. 
Again, any JPEG can be imported in there. And then some advanced tools that really give you the ability to refine your stitch, to adjust your blending levels, and some basic color corrections. With that, it's really that simple. Um, I can now just take a quick look at my right eye, make sure it's still what I want it to be, and I can look at what a stereo render would look like. This is the top bottom, so this is ultimately what we're making. Um, go back to left eye for now, and I'm gonna hit the render button. Now when I hit render, I get some very basic functions. I'm gonna tell the system I wanna create a 3D image. I want to create it in a standard 16 by nine aspect ratio. So this is broadcast 4K resolution. I could make a custom resolution. Let's say for example, I wanna go 4096 by 2160. In fact, let's go ahead and just do that for this render. Um, this is what's referred to as cinematic 4K. Um, this is what a lot of production companies and, and Hollywood filmmakers actually shoot in and then they render out the broadcast 4K at 3840 by 2160. So let's just do a custom one for giggles here today. Um, now I'm gonna go to the advanced tab. I could choose whether I wanted to output my left eye or my right eye if I was just doing a, two, a 2D image. Um, my video bit rate, um, for this discussion, I'm gonna go ahead and just up this to the maximum, which is 100 megabits per second. Um, we don't really have a lot of moving subjects in here, the water going back and forth but we do have some really deep shadows. Uh, so I think that it might be helpful to go ahead and render at a higher bit rate. So I'm gonna render at 100 megabits per second, and I'll use the standard uh, uh, stitching method. There is an adaptive method in here. Uh, it does take a little bit longer to stitch. Uh, we refer to it as experimental, think of it as beta. We're working on trying to optimize all of those algorithms right now. So I'm not gonna use that today, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use the standard. And then, uh, Let's go ahead and just call this one uh, beach, although it's not really much of a beach. And uh, I'm going to simply hit render. So before I hit render, just a quick reminder, we're doing 3D, so it's gonna be left eye, right eye, top, bottom. I've done a custom resolution at 4096 by 2160, which is really the kind of maximum resolution for the camera. Um, we were using um, 100 megabit per second rendering and standard stitching. And we'll just call this beach underscore one in case I go back and make another one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit render. So now what the system does is it's going and taking all eight of those cameras. Remember we use four of those full HD cameras to create a 4K video for your left eye. We use the other four to create a 4K video for your right eye. Uh, we are rendering out about three minutes and 44 seconds worth of video. We have about three minutes and 30 seconds left of that. So again, I'm just gonna fast forward here till we get to uh, the full render, and then I'll show you what it looks like on the screen. Okay, that video render is absolutely complete. Uh, took us, we did about, uh, well, three minute and 44 second video. Took us uh, just short of three minutes. If you're a skeptic and concerned that I actually zoom past anything, go ahead and watch back and watch the actual clock down here. You'll notice that I did not cheat, uh, but we did render in pretty close to real time, about one minute for every one minute of rendering, or one minute of, one minute of rendering for every one minute of video. <laughs> that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and just close this out. I'm gonna choose this file that I just created. I'm going to say show in folder. And uh, there it is, Beach One. Let's go ahead and open that up. And now what we have is we have a 4K per eye top bottom video uh, that is in complete stereo. I'll go ahead and render out this video, um, or not render, I'll go ahead and post this video as well. Take your virtual reality headsets, put it on, take a look at the 3D effect. Put down in your comments below your questions. I'd be happy to answer them. I look forward to continue shooting with you. Uh, I'm Jim Malcolm with Humanized Technologies and the Humanized VR Academy.